Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, we're going to explore variegated floss. This is floss that isn't a solid color. Say, when you normally pick up a red skein of floss, it's all red. The entire skein is the same color. Well, variegated fluctuates. So within that skein, you can have either a single color from light to dark, or you can have different colors within that skein. It might go yellow, green, blue, and so on. Throughout the skein, though, you'll have that pattern, whether it's a gradient of a single color or a rainbow of colors. It's really very interesting, and it produces very interesting results. There are specific stitches that are very effective with this variegated floss. And I think if you use any abundance of almost any stitch with variegated floss, you'll get that effect, that graduation. Now, variegated floss and its effects aren't for everyone. If you're somebody that likes to really control your piece, or you like to have pristine contrast, say between a red and your fabric, well, maybe variegated floss isn't for you. But if you're somebody that likes the whimsical and unexpected nature that variegated floss provides an unexpected color, well, this is right up your alley. There's one stitch in particular, or it's actually a combination of stitches, for the bullion stitch rose, and I think it is a gorgeous technique. It uses French knots for the center of the rows, and then these bullion stitches, which I think look like caterpillars, and those stitches are wrapped around those French knots. It produces a rose-like effect. So I'm going to show you how I do that today in class. But I also wanted to show you a way that you can get the variegated effect in a little more controlled environment by combining threads. It's not a new technique, but it is a technique I haven't done in a video before. By combining the threads, you can get that continued effect and that variation at the same time. I'll show you the difference between making the same stitch with the variegated thread and the faux variegated thread. It's quite interesting. You might find that to be very useful in your work. So let's get started. So variegated floss comes in lots of colors and lots of variations. It's just not a solid color of floss. So we can run the spectrum from dark to light in that specific color, like here we have pinks or oranges. The thread itself goes from darker orange to light orange and then back again. So you'll have the repeated pattern of the different colors. You also might have thread that isn't the same color. So this is green and blue, and this is a cotton pearl, and this is like a purpley pink and a red. So you can have lots of variations for the variegated thread. It doesn't have to be a similar color or tones of one color. You can buy them individually, all different types of brands, or you can purchase a set like this. This happens to be my favorite set. This has 36 little skeins, and they're all basically the monotone-ish color, but they start very light and go dark and then back and forth. Now, the variegated thread has many beautiful uses. It has pros and cons, just like all threads. It's possible to get that beautiful variation on your own, and I'll show you how to do that as well. But I also wanted to show you the unpredictability of variegated thread. So one of the reasons you use variegated thread is because it gives you a lot of subtle options and a lot of subtle results in your work. So if I'm stitching a lot of stitches, and this is all using the same variegated thread, which is this beautiful color scheme. I started out in the middle and just continue to stitch these concentric circles. And you see I get variation from very light to dark. And it's a beautiful result. It really shows up on solid color fabric. It's subtle, but very attractive. Now here, I just cut a length of that variegated thread. And it varies from very dark to medium to very light. And it's somewhat unpredictable. So if you're stitching something that you need an exact color for and you need to know exactly where it's going to be, you can do the work required to cut out your thread and make sure that you knot at the darkest if you want your darkest to show up first, and vice versa. If you want your lightest stitches to show up first, you knot at the lightest portion. But it's somewhat unpredictable. And as we saw in this sample, it just varies. So you're, you're not getting a specific controlled result. Now there's quite a lot of beauty in that effect, but perhaps you want that specific controlled result and you still want some variation. So I find the best way to get that 
is to make my own variegated thread. Before that though, I wanted to show you that sometimes you can stitch with variegated thread and not get the variation at all depending on the amount of thread you use and the size. So over here, I use the variegated thread right from this skein and I just sewed three stitches, which is not a lot, but as you can see, there's no variation between the first and the last stitch. Using that same thread, as you can see on the back, I just continued with that length. I sewed some very sloppy satin stitches, two bullion stitches, an X, as well as this French knot. And I got very little, if any, variation the entire length. I took out some of that DMC variegated thread And again, I got a little bit of variation over here. So the longer you stitch with it, the more variation you'll get and the more variegation it will show. Again, this is a similar effect that I found here where you have to use quite a bit of that stitching. Now to make my own thread, I got a lot of variation and it was very steady. And that's because it really isn't variegated. It's a fake variegation, but I do have multiple strands of different colors and that's how I got that beautiful variation. So let me show you how I did that. So again, I have that strand of the variegated thread and then I took three colors of pink, three different shades of pink to make my own variegated thread. So these are the three threads that I chose. You can see a light, a medium and a dark. And I have them here. Now I've already used them, so they're not six strands a piece, they're only four. What you need to do now is separate these strands into individual strands. So to do that, I take them, tap the edge, and pull out a strand. Now I still want six strands, and I'm going to do an even combination. So I'll take each one of these, tap them out, and pull out two strands. And then I just line them up. And I'll continue doing this with the remaining two colors so that I'll have three colors each of two strands each. So now I have six strands here. I'm going to line them up by holding the top of each of the strands, lining them up individually together. So it is a little time consuming and finicky, but the results are quite beautiful. So I have my six strands. I just pull them together neatly. And now I can thread my needle just as if it was six strands of embroidery floss. Right away, you can't see the difference unless you start to look up close. Now let me show you the result of using this. So right here, I stitched this beautiful bullion rose. And I'll show you how to do that. This is with my fake variegated thread, or my just combining different shades of that pink. But I'm gonna show you how I make this bullion rose using the variegated thread. And we'll see the difference. Again, it's not something that you can always count on being the same way because each of the variegated thread has a different look, but we can at least contrast it to see how different it looks from the rows where we purposely created the thread combination. So to start the little bullion rows, you wanna make three French knots. So I'm just gonna come up in the center here with my needle, which I've already knotted the end of it. And I purposely knotted it so the lightest color was going to show up first. I like to pull my thread fairly taut, wrap my needle, and I'll wrap it around four or five times, stick it back in my fabric, reach underneath and pull that while I'm still holding this end taut. And I have a beautiful French knot. So now I wanna do two more very close to each other, kind of, kind of making a pyramid shape. I wrap my needle with the loops five times, and then I come back in and make that knot, and now I'll make one more knot. Again, I come up very close to the others because I want that center of that bud of that rose to be very tight together. So now you can already see the variation, and that just happens to be the variation with this particular length of thread. So now to start this little bullion rose, all the petals are gonna overlap, starting close to the center and growing outward. 
and you can make this as large as you want. So I'm going to come up here in between those French knots and I'm going to make my first bullion stitch. So I'm going to stitch oh, right over here. So I'll come in from in between these knots and end up over here. Now a straight line as the crow flies goes right through those knots. I want my bullion stitch to curve. So I'm going to pull my, I'm going to turn this around so it's easier for me to see. And I'm going to bring my needle up very close to where I initially went down. So I come down here and I bring it up here. Now my knot is going to end where that needle went in, but I need to make the loops over here. So I'm just going to press my needle up while it's still going through the fabric, grab these loops, and I want to wind it around enough loops so that it will make that curve. I'm going to guess eight to 10 loops. You want it to be a little more than less, and that will give the beautiful curve. So I have 10 loops here, holding it fairly taut, not too much though. I'm just gonna slide my needle forward, and I'm using a sashiko needle here because it has a small eye and it's a nice long needle because I know some of my bullion stitches are gonna be quite long. I'm gonna just slide those loops down and pull all that thread through those loops. I've got it caught here. Just go back and gently pull it. And now I have a lovely long little, what I think looks like a caterpillar. So now I'm just gonna straighten my thread, pull it back to the area where I went down, just guide it into position and stitch down. And that's the first of the bullion stitches to make that rose. That's quite lovely. So now I wanna come in close to those French knots in between them for my next bullion stitch. So I'm gonna come in, bring my needle up. And again, I'm gonna bring it all the way around right in between those French knots. And I'm gonna pull that needle up right where we went down. I'll wrap my thread around. And this time I'll do just one more loop. So instead of 10, I'll do 11. maybe 12. Again, more loops are better because it gives you more of a curve. I wanna make sure that my thread, the tail end doesn't get stuck. I pull it down and then just work it into position and stitch it down. So now I'll continue that again. Now this time though, I'm gonna stitch just to the outside of that bullion knot. I'll start my stitch here, and that's where I'll return. I'm gonna come up around, and make sure I get my, knot in, my needle in position. Make sure I have enough thread to do this with. And I'm gonna loop it around 12 times. And that's just a number that I chose. You kind of get a feel for it the more you do it. I'm gonna slide all those loops to the end of the needle. Gently pull that through. Now if that loop goes over my stitches, I just gently coax it into place. And now I stitch down. Now if any of these little bullion knots are sticking up or they're unwieldy, I'll just come in there with a couching stitch and hold it down into place. Just tack it down with a stitch. So as you can see, there's already a beautiful variation between this rose and this rose. I'll make a few more of these bullion knots coming out just on the edge of where I went in. And I like to make them a little bit longer each time. So now I'm gonna come over here and make this about half the way from this petal. I like a little bit of variation and pretty soon I'll start making the petals longer each time. So I had 12 loops. I'll try and do 12 again. You 
it gets harder the shorter length of thread you have, but it also gets difficult if you have too much thread. It's a perfect opportunity for it to snarl up and knot. So I like to just pull that into shape, make sure it's a beautifully shaped little bullion knot, tack it down, and then I'll come up here and do, I'll use my couching stitch to hold that in place. And I'll do one, I'll do a few more off screen and show you how it looks when it's complete. So that's the completed bullion stitch using the variegated thread versus my method of just combining various colors of embroidery floss. It's a different look. They're both quite beautiful, just a little bit different. One is more predictable and one is a little bit more haphazard and whimsical. So I think the stitch itself is beautiful. I think the variation in color is an additional bonus. So quite a lot went into this video. We talked about variegated thread. We made faux variegated thread. We made the bullion stitch and we made the bullion stitch rose. It all kind of comes together because there are just slight variations on each technique or product. Have you combined threads in that faux variegated thread technique? Or do you like using variegated thread? Comment down below and also tell me your favorite stitches to use with a variegated thread and why you think they're effective. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.